Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another segment of our Mental Health Moments webinar. So my name is Linda Golick. I'm the Health and Wellbeing uh, Consultant here at Bell & Health. Uh, we do these segments monthly. We are always the second Tuesday I'm sorry, second Thursday. I don't even know what day it is because it was a holiday. I feel like after the holiday, I don't even know. So second Thursday of the month, we are always right here at 1 o'clock. And then we also put this out in a podcast format. So if you're listening to us, thank you for listening. So really excited for today's topic. So honored to have a very special guest with us. So we have Debbie Pack with us. Debbie is actually the vice president um, of the Balance Psychiatric Center. So welcome, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. We're, we're excited to hear from you. And as always, we have our, our standard licensed behavioral health therapist, the guy that everybody loves to listen to, Charles Latour. Charles, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. So today we thought we would take an opportunity to give some discussion and talk about how we can help each other and how we can remain open to other people, loving and supporting each other, even when we may be different or we may have differing opinions. And we had actually planned this topic a few weeks ago, and uh, a friend of mine posted a quote yesterday that I just wanted to share because I thought that this was a really great way for us to get started. So the quote is, everyone's different. Everyone has their own perspective on life respect that. And I thought that was a really great way to start out to really think about we are all different and how wonderful that we are because how boring it would be if we were all the same. So I think that's a really great place for us to begin. So Charles, want to kick it off with you. What are your initial thoughts as we kind of start the discussion on this topic? Well, you know, I was going to use a similar intro uh, that um, a great singer called the Queen of Soul by many um, had this great word, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, which you can't spell that word without thinking of that song while you're going through it. But so much of everything is about respect, the respect for uh, diversity of thought, respect for someone else's opinion, respect. I don't think you can have difficult conversations without some measure of respect and appreciation for something outside of your bubble of thought or your experience of your world. So I think whenever we're talking about personalities and differences, part of the, the starting point of it, the starting line for it essentially is respect and to be able to move forward with whatever differences we we have if we start that journey with respect we're starting it on the right direction yeah totally agree with you it, it really if we can have respect for each other that's a really great starting point uh, Debbie what are your initial thoughts on, on this discussion yeah, I always like to hear other people's opinions. And I'll be honest, sometimes I'm the first one surprised that um, somebody's opinion may be different than mine, um, which I don't know why that's surprising. Maybe that's human nature, right? Like you just assume that somebody would see something the same way you would. Um, but I think it's really important to try to get other opinions as well. Um, it really, I've learned uh, that it really opens up my view on different things. Um, and so it's just really important to be able to, to explore that a little bit more. And sometimes it's hard when people are really passionate about a topic or they're feeling maybe very vulnerable thinking of some of the things that have been going on recently in the news. Um, but also really important to be able to share that in an environment where they feel that they're safe to do so, I think is really important as well. Um, but it really then gains respect and trust of the other person or the group. Sometimes when we think about a work setting and what that may look like um, or a group setting. And I think that's so important uh, for the, the team to be able to engage and evolve. Um, and knowing that there are uh, varying opinions and that can actually enhance and improve what we do every day uh, is really important as well. 
Yeah, I really like that you brought that up, Debbie, because one of the things that we focus on here at Bellin is we actually focus on building psychological safety among our teams. And to be able to trust someone and to be able to share with someone, you have to be able to feel psychologically safe with them. And that only comes from people having these discussions. And sometimes the opinions are different, and sometimes the viewpoints are very different. But the, the ability to talk about that, to share with each other, that's where the power comes in. And that's what makes us stronger as teams, as an organization, uh, potentially as groups of friends, uh, all those types of things. I think it really enhances. So Charles, I wanted to ask you about, I think I, I've noticed this from little on. Like even when I was little, I was very um, drawn to the people that were similar to me. So I really liked my friend Rachel because she likes to play with Barbies just like I did. And uh, it seems like we kind of are drawn to people that are like us. So can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. So first of all, you are right. I think there is a draw to that. We love similarities. I remember my best friend for life started off in early grade school. There was this one class that towards the end of the year allowed the teacher invited kids to bring in their favorite record. And um, my this kid who I didn't know, he um, was in another class, that, so the teachers were doing it. I had the same record he had, and he couldn't believe that I had this record. I couldn't believe he had this record, and that bonded us for life. It was like one of those things. So it was music was a bonding experience. It became one of the the central themes of our lives. It's not that we liked everything the same, but it was it was a bonding thing. So there is this natural experience that we have that um, there's, and even in the business world, there's a great Harvard business article that said something to the effect of, we like doing business with people we like doing business with. So the more you get to like people and similarities, there's something to that which is it helped, it's reaffirming for us that, wow, I'm not the only one who likes that record. You like that too. I'm not the only one who liked that movie. You like that too. There's something nurturing about that, but there's also something great about expanding. And I think that's what Debbie, you were tapping into, is that we have this starting point of the similarities. You like this, I like this. Our relationships even do that. Oh gosh, she likes the same music that I do, likes the same movies I do, likes the same books that I do. But, and here's where I think the growth comes in. We get completed when there's another element. When the friend is like, wow, you know, I would have never have liked to play, but they introduced me to theater. I would never would have liked this author, but he or she introduced me to that. So we start with that base of similarity, but then we expand and that's when we have the growth and all of that is a fabulous process. But I want, I want there's a few more things I want to say, but before we, we transition, I want to add one more element that I think goes with the respect that we were talking about is that openness comes into this the ability to be open to step beyond my bubble and say, help me put more in here rather than what is there. And that openness, it's um, sometimes we talk about it as an open mindset, but I think an open mindset is key to being able to nurture relationships and expand our own horizons along and growing with those that we are experiencing those relationships with. Absolutely agree with that. And, and Debbie, I really wanted to transition that to you then. You know, when we think about openness, and I'm sure you, you've worked with a lot of different teams, you know, here at Bellin, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on what, 
what works in terms of that? When you, when you bring together a group of people and there's lots of different ideas and there's lots of different viewpoints, how do you help to uh, bring that together and, and help people come up with solutions together, even if everyone has different ideas? Yeah. Absolutely, and I think about one of the work groups that we did probably about a year or so ago, and um, it was a newer team, leaders, new leaders, and um, a few other people as well. And I intentionally asked somebody to be part of a group. She had the knowledge and the background, but it wasn't necessarily something within her role that she does here at Ballot. Um, but I intentionally brought her in because I knew she would bring in a different viewpoint. And that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to have diversity in the group and I knew she would feel comfortable enough to speak up. Um, and she had no idea that was the reason why I was asking for her to participate in the group. Um, but I told her the purpose of the group um, and she was all in and she said, yeah, I think this will be great. I'd, I'd be happy to help, which I absolutely appreciate of her. And that happened, right? She spoke up and she said, what about this? And I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Now, if we thought about this and what that really did, it, it was a couple of things that it did for the group. One, it helped kind of them see that it's okay to speak up and it's okay to have varying opinions. Sometimes what I hear from people, and I don't know if it's, they they feel like their voice isn't as important as others or maybe that their opinions or thoughts are different i'll hear them apologize before they actually speak their thoughts and i really try to encourage people not to do that that it's okay to have to be different in that thought um, and often what that does as far as our work groups is it helps us plan for different situations that we may not otherwise have thought of um, and it really helps the group uh, again feel that comfort level of being able to share and at least put something out there. Um, or even sometimes it leads to what their talents are that we otherwise wouldn't be aware of, uh, which is great. When we bring those groups together too, sometimes um, I find it helpful to determine what is what is our goal, what is our aim with this, because then we can always refer back to that, right? So it's still good to have those differing opinions uh, and input and thoughts, and we want that. Uh, we want to make sure, though, if we can't come uh, to some common ground, we go back to what that aim was. And sometimes it includes talking about what the different ground rules are or the, the team member expectations. Um, but I find that all of that helps in a group setting. Um, the other thing too that I find really helpful since I joined Bellin, part of our leadership meetings, it, there's a lot of conversations about which direction we should go, what are some of the bigger decisions that we should be making, right? And so there's a lot of different uh, thoughts on that and people providing input. And one of the things that I've learned that I've tried to incorporate more in my teams as well is we'll have somebody speak their, what they believe is the next best step, for example. And another leader will say, I don't know that I agree with that. This is my thoughts on it. And I'll actually see that first person turn around and say, thank you so much. That helps me understand it a little bit better. Thank you so much. Let me take time to think about that a little bit. And again, it just is that mutual respect back to the other person, validating that I heard what you said. I find that interesting. Um, maybe we need to talk more about it. But again, it just creates that, that common ground and that ability for people to be able to speak up and share. And I really appreciate that about the teams. So I love where you're going with that, Debbie, kind of this idea of finding common ground. So I'm, I'm thinking now if we switch it from more of that business perspective to more of the personal perspective. So we may have friends and relatives in our lives that think differently than we do and have different opinions on things than we do. And you talked about that common ground. So how do we do this on a personal level? Um, even maybe just with the relationship that we have with a coworker that may be uh, being very verbal about something and maybe we don't agree with that. Uh, how, how do we manage that? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And it leads back to what Charles was talking about in regards to it really does help us grow um, and help us uh, become more open to other people's views. And I think about, I've got this, she's a fantastic friend. Uh, we run uh, together from time to time um, and she teaches as well. And I was sharing with her my opinion on sports and grades, right? And how I felt the two were tied together. 
And I really thought that because she's so much like me, I really thought that her opinion would have been the same. And she actually challenged me and said, you know, I, th I feel very differently about that. And uh, she said, you tell me more why you feel the way you feel. And I'll tell you more about why what I've seen and the way that I feel about it. And of course, this is as we're running and we're gasping for breath in between. Um, but it was a great conversation. And I have to say at the end of it, it really did expand my views on something so simple, right? Like it, we weren't talking about necessarily our, our children, uh, just our views in general. And I really respected that her view was different and that she was able to share. And that actually changed my view a little bit as well. And I think it just helped me mature in understanding more of life in general. Um, and it, it also gave me a lot more respect for her as a person too, that I knew that she had different experiences that I did. Um, and it helped me see the world a little differently. That's so beautiful, Debbie. What a great example of, of a real life situation where you held that respect and you listened to each other and, and you were influenced by each other and you could walk away from that conversation feeling really good about it. Charles, what, what would you like to add to that? Yeah, you know, a lot, but first of all, thank you for that, Debbie. That was so cool. Really great stuff. Um, I guess I'll start with a little mini introduction to a story, tell this short story, and then talk a little bit more about the dynamics of it. But I was talking with someone about what we don't really get in our society, even from the time that we're little kids, uh, through adulthood is we get speech, you know, in school, persuasive speeches, do this speech, informative speeches. Oh, you're a good speaker. You did great with that talk, this and that. I don't know of anybody who's got the listening uh, class that we, we were taught, like, what's the best way? The only talk that we get about it is, you know, listen to your elders or we get this listening is just be quiet but listening really is i always talk about four elements of listening we listen with our ears which is it tunes us to content we listen with our eyes which means we're connecting with the person we're talking to and we listen with our hearts so we could connect to how they feel and then we listen with our soul to get the meaning out of what this person is saying. So we've got the words, we've got what it looks like, we've got what it feels like and what it means. And I call that inside out, inside out listening. That if, we, if we're not doing that, we're probably going to fall short somewhere along the way. But I've never heard that taught anywhere. I've never heard it where this is what we need to do. Instead, what if we're even decent at this, we listen for content in the minute we disagree, we're ready to pounce on that content. No, that, that's not what I said. That's not what I meant. I wasn't saying that. So we, we listen enough to let the writing reflex of something kick in. The minute we could correct what we didn't want to hear or what was wrong, that's as long as we listen to it for. So, First of all, so that's the intro to this story. So I talked with this person about this. Person's like, I'm going to try it out. Had a talk with a friend who has been consistently, every time they go out, they go out for dinner, they have this big fight. It could be about anything. Typically, it's around politics, but it could be about anything. They just have this, this way of they just keep doing this. So we talked about this and the person's next appointment came in and he said, I, I listened with what you said. And oftentimes where I go with all of this is listen to understand with the intent to understand the landscape of this person's mind. If you could understand, understand the landscape of this person's mind, you're truly listening. So his goal was to try that. And he did it in his next appointment. He came in and said, you know, I did that. I said, oh, good. How did it go? And he said, after we were done, 
I would just listen to the person and barely said anything and thanked him for what he was telling me. And I told him that I really understood what he meant and even how it felt to him. And true emotional intelligence is that we feel felt by the person we're talking to. So we told him all that when he, he said, so, and I said, well, what happened then? He said, the person just started crying. And he said, I had missed our friendship so much that we haven't done this in years. And it's so great to have this back. I'm like, oh my God, that's like the I love that story that this, the listening alone brought friendship together, tears together, and a greater connection than they had felt in years. And what it took is I, I'm tempted to say as all it took was listening, but that understates it because listening is so much more than we think. And we can never understate the importance of listening and what it means to being able to connect even on difficult topics. So that's what I think is the most important part in the way I look at it. And Charles, I think you bring up a really important point because there's something to be said about this is at least I look at it, but I, I would be curious to your input. This is a skill that can be learned, right? And we can get better at this every day. And I think about it's really hard in those moments when we are absolutely set on something or we're very passionate about something and you're right so you want to you've got this natural instinct of you want to pounce and be able to to share your side of it but if we start out in some really simple steps too right so uh, think about things that maybe don't call politics always causes tends to cause a lot of passion but we think about other things right uh asking your friend what's your favorite nfl team and why and perhaps it's different, but it, it teaches you some of those skills of being able to actively listen, to participate, to hear somebody, to find out more about it, to explore it. And I think the other thing that's important to share too is that just because you're, you see somebody else's point of view does not necessarily mean that your point of view changes. And I think some people have a fear of that, right? Like I would never agree with that, so thus I can't explore it. But that's not necessarily the case. Like Charles, as you're talking about, you can understand more of the landscape. It doesn't mean that you yourself are going to uh, change your opinion necessarily. I think it just gives you a better understanding of another person. Yeah, I think the great point, and oftentimes I'll tell people is if you're gonna have this conversation with the intent that you're gonna change someone's mind and that, th that this is the goal of it, Highly unlikely, especially on a number of things that are current right now in our society. Highly unlikely. The goal is to get curious enough to want to know their stance. You already know yours, right? The goal is to be curious enough to want to know their stance, completely understand it, appreciate it. But you made a great point in there, which was it doesn't mean you're agreeing with it. It just means that you're listening to understand them. And then if there's an opportunity for you to even say your perspective, uh, and sometimes you do and sometimes you don't even need to, but the whole idea is that this isn't to change anybody's minds or perspectives. It may, but if that's the goal, you're probably gonna fall short or get into that persuading which then oftentimes can lead to a little bit more friction. But if it's to do what we're talking about, it usually goes to a, a, a much more positive, productive, beneficial place. Well, and I love what you're saying, Charles, that the goal is to, to know what they think, to, to know what they think, to understand what they think. And that really goes back to that underlying respect of, even if your opinion is different than mine, I want to understand it. I want to hear more about it. I want to be open to it because I could really learn something from that. And uh, I, I heard a quote many, many years ago, and I, I thought this really rings true. You know, listening to someone is, is the best gift we can give them. It, it 
it really is. So when we think about what we can do for people, sometimes just listening. You know, I think about mm-hmm. myself, if, if I'm struggling with somebody, I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to call certain people. And who do you think I'm going to call? I'm going to call the people that really listen to me. They're really the ones that are trying to understand what's going on. And uh, so it's, it's a great gift. It's a great gift that we can give to people. And I love what you said, Debbie. It's something we can work on. If you're not the best listener right now, maybe set a goal for yourself to, to make that something that you want to work on because it is such a great thing to be able to do that. So, Charles, uh, one of the things that we had talked about when we were planning for this session was the idea that uh, certainly great things have been accomplished by people who maybe don't agree and come from from different viewpoints. And we think about just here at Bell & Health. If uh, a patient comes in and there's an emergency situation going on, there are multiple people that are working with that patient, touching that patient, taking care of that patient. It's this team effort. It's all these different skills coming together. And Charles had a great story about an Olympic team that didn't necessarily agree, but something great came out of it. Charles, do you want to share that story with everyone? Sure. And I want to loop into it a comment you made about the listening. Listening is your way of showing you care. Um, Everybody who walks into my office right here, the main thing they want to first do is like tell their story. Make sure I know their narrative, what's in their mind, what's there, why it's there, what's been happening. Um, There's a great saying, which I love, which is, um, it seems like the more I talk, the less I'm learning. That we we have to be listening before we're talking. And the listening from a clinical standpoint and tying in what both of you are talking about is unconditional positive regard. That's the ultimate respect. Whatever it is that you're bringing, bring it. I'm here to listen to it. I'm not here to judge it. The more I can listen, the more I can understand, the better we're going to be and the better the connection. And then we can start working, but we can't work until listening has happened first. And again, we don't have to all agree. And we, in, in like this Olympic team and the story you were um, segueing into. So in this, um, I think it was the most recent Olympics, there were four women runners, the four best in the world. They were the fastest individually, a fastest team. They had beaten everybody in all the preliminaries. Unfortunately, they didn't like each other all that much. In fact, they had a very intense dislike and they would all, they frequently said things about each other and why they didn't like each other and what their friction was. It was highly publicized, highly impactful to the question of should they even be racing together and are they jeopardizing a potential gold medal? And the coach was asked, you know, you've got four elite runners. They're all great. Uh, Are you going to run them together? Are you going to put other runners in who get along better? And the coach said, of course, they're going to run together. And they're like, well, they hate each other. They can't do that. You're going to have to get a couple that like each other more. It's important for the handoffs and everything else. This is such an orchestrated run. Everything has to go great. And you have to have that liking for each other. And the coach said, well, here's what, here's the situation. They may hate each other, but for 35 seconds, they're going to love each other. And that's what wound up happening. I, I'm exaggerating, maybe 40 seconds. For, it was the four by 100. So it was like for 40, they may hate each other, but for 40 seconds, they're going to love each other. And they did exactly that, won the gold medal. So it's like, how can we put things aside and still be our best, especially when we need to be? And I think that's a microcosm of so many different scenarios in life where our differences may be there, but what are we gonna do about it? And what, how are we gonna still get better? How are we still gonna do great things? How important that concept is. idea, Charles, like, how do we get better? How do we get better? So rather than 
just believing that our way is the only way and staying kind of stuck in that, knowing that we, we can get better and we can improve. So love all of that. So feel free to chat in any questions that you might have for Charles and for Debbie. They're happy to, to take questions. And as people think about that, um, I just want to also talk about any resources that there might be um, out there that you two would recommend. If people don't feel like they're being heard or they feel like they're alone in their viewpoint in, in some way, shape, or form, uh, what words of advice or what resources would, would you recommend for them? Charles, Debbie, I'll start you want with to go you. first or you want me to? I'll let you go first, Charles, then I'll go. Okay. I think the first one is some, if it's pronounced enough and you think you need, like that book kind of says, is maybe you need to talk to somebody. Um, sometimes talking with a, a resource could be helpful, even if it's just in a relationship that's being heard, you know, um, in relationships, I'm always looking at um, bi-directional influence. Do we, are, are we open up enough to be influenced by each other or is everything my way? or everything is my way. I sometimes use the analogy of a football field. There's two end zones. Uh, sometimes one person always feels I have to go to your side of the football field and agree and do with whatever you say and what, where, whether it's what car we're gonna buy or where we're we gonna go out for dinner or whatever. And we have to be able to influence. We may not always be able to come out to the 50 together, but we could at least come out to the 5, 10, or 20 on certain things and allow for reciprocal, bi-directional relationship, listen enough, and sometimes just creating that dynamic is enough to get past certain things. There's one book that I could think of that is almost universally one that I could say, no matter who you are, we could have some appreciation and find some degree of benefit for and from, and it's this book, it's called Difficult Conversations. And it's by Douglas Stone, Sheila Heen, and Bruce Patton, all from Harvard when they wrote this. It came from a program called uh, the Program on Negotiation and how people can negotiate and communicate effectively around any topic. And anybody who can read this book, uh, if you get, if you're able to in, in invest in it, you, there's almost no way it could go wrong. And I guess one other thing I would say, as far as even a personal resource, and one of the, I think the themes throughout what we're all three of us talking about is being able to get past the point of being right is because most Things. Research tells us, especially in marital relationships, 80% of anything and everything that we will ever communicate about doesn't have a right or wrong to it, which is why they're so hard to resolve. So one comment that they make in this book is it, a husband and wife, one likes to sleep with the window open, one likes to sleep with it closed. Who's right? I sometimes will ask that to a group and then, well, the one who likes it open. <laughs> well, that tells me you probably <laughs> like it open, right? It doesn't mean it's right. It just means that that's where you are too. So most of these things don't have a right or wrong, not even close, but how do we understand and work through it and get over being right? I often use the phrase that I'd rather be happy than right rather than right and miserable. Right usually takes us to a place of, yeah, I proved my point, but everybody's miserable in the process. So I think if we can do those things, there's one other book called Crucial Con Conversations. I don't like it as much as this, but uh, I think this is a great resource for anybody who might be interested. Charles, I had to chuckle a little bit as you were talking about, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? <laughs> um, and it just reminds me, we, we share this with my daughter, who is 18 years old and uh, very much a determined young lady. And she gets stuck sometimes, as we all do, uh, but she gets stuck on being right. 
And there are times where we actually have to tell her, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. But now how can we better this situation? <laughs> because she gets so stuck on, but this is the right thing. Um, and, and she just needs to hear that you're not wrong. You're not wrong, right? There's no right or wrong answer in this. You're not wrong. But now we need to figure out a solution to this. And so it kind of made me chuckle as you were talking about that, because so often we have that conversation with her. Um, and I think that something that hopefully matures as well in age and grows. Um, my personal recommendations to your question, Linda, really are finding those trusted resources. Um, so I have a trusted resource at work when I'm thinking, huh, I don't, I'm not sure about this. Um, I'm not sure if this is too out there if I share it or how do I share it? Um, and so I've got some trusted resources depending on what the situation is. And I'll say, I need you to tell me, I need you to tell me if I'm far off base here. Um, I need you to tell me if this makes sense or not. Um, I'm curious as to your thoughts on it. Um, and so to find that trusted resource. Um, and the other thing too, if anybody feels real alone out there with their thought, um, again, most likely if you're having this thought, others are. And I think that's really important because that can easily get lost sometimes, especially in group settings or at work. Um, it just really is one of those things that you think in the back of your mind, I'm the only one. Why, why do I think differently? Um, and that is not a bad thing, right? So sometimes we have to be able to appreciate that and share that we appreciate that as well. Um, and we do, we do live in a world where we sometimes prefer things black and white. And the answer is, is that there are, sometimes it's very complex and there's many different ways to get to that same end point. So to Charles' point about the four runners, they understood what their goal was and they all were determined in their own way. They may not necessarily have liked or enjoyed being around each other, but they came together for that purpose and were able to accomplish it. And I think that's really important for us to always remember, especially about life, which can be messy and complicated and more complex than any of us would have ever wanted. But when we think about, there are many ways to get from point A to point B and hearing others' thoughts on it really allow us to start to navigate through that. And I think that's really important as we think about some of the things that we go through in life. Great comments from both of you. I, I love so much of, of what you're sharing with us today. There's just so much there to really think about common goals and listening being a gift and rather be happy than right, and, and no one's right in those situations. Charles, I think you heard a conversation between me and my husband about the windows being open. He <laughs> must have heard that. <laughs> there are different opinions, and you're right. Neither one of us is right. So um, what a great, great discussion. I just, I so appreciate the two of you being so open and honest and bringing so much great content to the session and just really reassuring everyone to work on being open and being respectful and continuing to have those conversations with people. Be open, listen to each other. That is so many great things can come of that um, in our work environments, with our families, ho hopefully in our, our world is in, in a greater way if we, we can listen to each other. Just so much great stuff there. So I don't see any questions. So any final thoughts from, from the two of you? Charles, any final thoughts? I, yeah, a couple. I, I would say that one of the hardest things to do in what we're talking about doing, because some of this stuff, what people often tell me in here is, wow, you know, here's, want to know what's interesting about our meetings? Now well, what? When you say it, we're listening and it sometimes sounds so easy. And then when we go to do it, it doesn't feel nearly as easy. So just because something sounds simple doesn't mean it's easy. You have to work at it. It's a mindset to be able to listen, to be able to have unconditional positive regard. And I guess two things I'll say that I haven't said yet is one is especially with family our immediate family and then extended 
in difficult times and conversations, if there's two things that will help you the most, in addition to what we've already said, one is be able to get a mindset of assuming good intent, that if we love each other, even if we're disagreeing, I still love you and hopefully you still love me. We could assume good intent from people who are family and love each other. And then the second one with that is to be able to, even when we don't fully see eye to eye, go for the common ground. What do we at least, even if we see it differently, what do we at least see commonly? And that will at least get you out to the 20 or even the 30 yard line from where our starting line is. So you wanna be able to go as much like this as possible rather than away. And if you could do those things, and one other thing is in any of them, avoid harsh starts. Harsh starts, we gotta do this, I need to talk to you. Harsh starts, wherever they start, only go downhill from there. That if we could keep it civil and respectful within it, and again, with that mindset of understanding the landscape through someone else's eyes, lens, and viewpoint, we're gonna be in a better place. But assuming good intent anchors everything to go in a positive direction. Great words of advice, Charles. Beautifully put. Debbie, any final thoughts? Yeah, I have just a couple of similar to Charles, but uh, one of my final thoughts is we're not as different from each other as sometimes we tend to be. So, uh, you know, sometimes we get focused on, boy, I'm surprised they have a different viewpoint or I'm surprised they have that viewpoint. But if we can keep in mind that we're not so different, we probably have more in common with each other than we have as far as differences. I think that helps keep us connected to each other and pulling together for each other. And then allows us to be more um, forgiving or understanding or allows us to be more open to others' opinions when they are different than ours. I know we spent some time talking about the active listening. And the other thing I wanted to share with that is that takes time, right? It's much simpler to say, this is where I want us to be or where I want us to go or what we need to do. Um, but to take that extra time to listen proactively up front, I find oftentimes helps throughout the process because otherwise you're gonna end up backtracking to that. So it's time worth spent is my advice. Take that time, take that extra five minutes put your pen down if you're at work, sit down next to your coworker and say, no, really, how, how is it going today for you? And if you can do that, that's much more meaningful than if you're running through and saying, hey, well, this is what we got to do today, right? So sometimes that upfront time that you're putting forth really pays off in the long run and building those relationships and those understandings between each other. And then I, as I always tend to, to like to uh, end is I just want to say thank you, right? And I think that's important when you've got somebody who has differences with you as well to be able to say thank you. Thank you for being brave enough to share. Thank you. Please tell me more about that. Thank you. I understand you better as a person. And I think all of those things are really important uh, when we're learning about others around us and ourselves. Absolutely. So true. So true. So thank you to the both of you. So much great content again. And I just really appreciate your, your openness and your honesty and your ability to shared so much with us today. I think you've given us a lot to think about and a lot that we can all hopefully work on so that we can continue to, to just build relationships with each other and, and have those connections because those are just so invaluable. So thank you to the two of you. Thank you for everyone that tuned in today. We really appreciate you taking the time. Feel free to pass on this recording to someone that you think may benefit from it. We'd appreciate that as well. So. Happy Thursday, everyone. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Debbie and Charles. Thank you. Thank you. you both. Thanks, Debbie. Have a good day.